Hi, I'm Linda Mann. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Applied Human Nutrition at Mount St. Vincent University. I'm here today with my collaborators to talk about my Child Care Centre menu planning project and uh, the tools and resources that we have developed. Dana Power is a registered professional dietitian and she is do currently doing her Master's of Education here at Mount St. Vincent University. Vanessa McClellan is a dietetic intern in the Department of Applied Human Nutrition and she has been doing her internship placement with me this summer. We have been working on developing many planning tools and resources for child care centers. And in this video presentation, we're going to take a little bit of time to explain these tools and resources, how we arrived at them, and how you may be able to use those in planning the best menus possible for your child care centers. So we'll start off, uh, Dana, perhaps you could tell me a little bit about, or tell us a little bit about why it's so important to have well-planned menus. Well, Linda, having worked in food services for a number of years myself, um, the importance of having a well-planned menu cannot be underestimated. And the same could be said for the child care centers. From your menu, um, we really see that you get things uh, related to the cost of the menu, um, so you can look at your budget, um, what types of kitchen equipment you require in order to have your menu um, planned and prepared appropriately, as well as um, the food shopping. So it's easier for the people that are working in the centers to plan um, their uh, grocery, grocery order. Producing a menu in advance also allows um, for people that are working in the center, the children and the parents, to see what's going to be coming up um, in terms of the meal service. And uh, this is very helpful, we learned from our um, child care centers that we worked with in terms of the flexibility of the menu and uh, looking at things like going on an outing and in affording that flexibility to pull out a day from the menu um, to, to provide a bag lunch for the children to go on the outing. Vanessa, one of your key components that you did with this project was to come up with a, me a model or a framework for child care center menu planning. Perhaps you can tell us a little bit about this model and how you arrived at it. Sure, so the venue plan model really consolidates all the factors or professional standards that need to be taken into consideration um, in menu planning. And so through a literature review and through our collaboration group uh, results, we were able to include all the criteria that is important to consider uh, for child care centers in menu planning. So this model is broken down to four sections. It, um, it really uh, outlines all of the, the standards, um, policy standards, uh, and Canada's Food Guide criteria. And through our collaboration group uh, results, it also takes into account the child and center considerations. And you can have a look at this model and you can see that uh, we, gain, we have those four components. And I'd like to just mention a little bit about the first one there, the food and nutrition standards. And um, that they have, first of all, the government policies. And I'd just like to mention that uh, they're we are following the Daycare Act and the guidelines related to that for food and nutrition. And uh, there is the Nova Scotia um, support policy for child care centers is still under development. And we hope that uh, uh, when this soon is implemented that uh, we might need to make some slight adaptations to our, our tools and resources, but uh, that it will certainly be very useful as it applies to that. The other component is the Canada's Food Guide and Best Practices, and we have incorporated those into child food group servings and best practices. And just to illustrate there, we've taken the food groups and the servings per day by ages uh, based on Canada's Food Guide, identification of what a food guide serving is, and best practices. So for example, you can see on this a child two to three years of age should have four servings of vegetables and fruits. It breaks down what a serving of that is. It may be a piece of fruit. It could be um, a 250 mils or a cup of uh, leafy uh, vegetables or half cup, uh, 125 mil serving of fresh frozen, canned, or juice. Some best practices that apply to that, um, you can review those on the side, is certainly to make sure you serve a variety of vegetables and fruits that you serve them uh, prepared with little or no added fat, sugar, or salt, and you try to serve the whole vegetables and fruits or the prepared vegetables and fruits more often than juice. 
So I'm going to turn now to Dana, and we'll go back to the model. Perhaps you can elaborate and tell us a little bit more um, about the creativity and aesthetics and why they are so important to consider in menu planning. Mm. Well, combining foods in such a way that you're meeting the standards and policy requirements from the province is obviously very important. But certainly um, another factor that uh, shouldn't be left out is that of um, creativity and aesthetics. And by menu aesthetics, we are looking at things like um, providing on a, a meal presentation colors that are in contrast, looking at shapes of foods and, and providing different types of shapes on a plate, and even looking at... Um, when you're considering planning your menu, things around food textures. So giving consideration to serving um, a raw vegetable with a cooked vegetable to provide um, kind of that, that change in, in texture for the children. And certainly, um, I think as adults, we all realize that we, cert we usually eat with our eyes. We're very visual people. And I don't think children are any different than that. And uh, as, as child care centers, I think you know, it's important to always take those into consideration in terms of trying to provide an appealing plate and uh, increase the chances that it will be more widely accepted by the children. The other two factors there on the menu plan model are child considerations and center considerations. Perhaps you can elaborate a little bit more, Dana, and tell us how those considerations were arrived at. Well, as this was a research project, we initially started out looking at um, researching what types of information and resources are available that would be um, taking into consideration things for the children and for the centers as well. Um, additionally, we looked at providing a survey to all licensed child care centers in Nova Scotia, where we asked them to provide us with information about what their current menu planning practices, um, what types of challenges they face as a center, and what types of resources they would find useful in menu planning. We also invited people to participate as part of a collaboration group, and we were very fortunate that we had 25, approximately 25 centers agree to participate with us. Um, so we held two focus group meetings, and at these meetings we were really able to hear from the centers about what types of things they would find most useful in terms of resources. So by combining all of this feedback, um, we were able to come up with what we felt were the key child and center considerations to conclude in our model. And certainly under the child center, uh, child considerations, um, things such as um, the developmental stages of the children, um, cultural and special diet considerations came out to be most important. And under the center considerations, things like budgeting, um, menu costing, um, and food safety would be ones that we looked at. Now, Vanessa, the key question everyone is, wants to know is how can we take this information from that we've pulled together with a menu plan model and use that to create a menu? Okay, so it's very important for everyone to understand that menu planning is a process. So with that being said, we firstly have to uh, allow the child care center menu planners to really understand all the factors and criteria that are in our menu plan model. And then next, it's to establish a menu template. Now, we have an example of a menu template on our website. And the menu template is, uh, it really creates variety in, in that it's not always, um, you know, a, a meat uh, entree or things like that. It really takes into account combination dishes. It really takes um, the child into consideration in that there may be a field trip, there may be a picnic, lunch. So we, we do have, you know, the pizza sandwich day in there. So that menu template is very important to follow. Next is to uh, build a recipe database or to place your recipes inside your menu template. Mm -hmm. So on the website, we do have a recipe database consisting mm -hmm. of recipes that are completely costed in the food group servings are calculated as well. So uh, very helpful in meeting our government policies and standards. And next is just to uh, create your menu. And I think uh, the menu will um, be formed once you take all those things into consideration. This is just a quick illustration of a sample menu because on the website um, we again pulling from imp input from our collaboration group and some work we did ourselves we compiled uh, several sample menus. This is just an example of one of them and uh, you can certainly see that we have uh, followed the menu pattern uh, by ensuring that we have the food group servings for each one of the snacks and for the, for the noon meal. 
and uh, we have also followed the template so it shows the variation that will serve like a uh, the first day is a meat um, entree the next day we have a meat alternate and so on and so forth if you uh, look at this information on our website you'll be also able to go down and see how we've provided an explanation on how these sample menus meet our our, our model criteria um, so Vanessa, once the menu planner has created their menu, or while they are creating their menu, how can they ensure, ensure that they are meeting all of the criteria? Okay, so after a menu has been created, or if you're gaining some independence in making changes to your menu, it's important to have a, an evaluation form to go back and reassess, making sure you're meeting all the requirements and criteria. So we have developed an evaluation form that's uh, broken up into the four sections that our menu plan model um, encompassed and I'm just going to go through each of the, the sections and maybe give you an idea of the checklist items that are in each category. So under food and nutrition standards um, one of the things is that the noon meal uh, consists of one serving from each of the four food groups and that the snack items consist of one serving from two different food groups and one being the vegetable and fruit uh, Canada's food guide category. Under creativity and aesthetics it's important that we, uh, the, ch the children have variety um, in their menu and that the menu items are child-friendly or appropriate for the age category. Under child considerations, we um, like to see that the allergies that the children are having or their special dietary considerations are, um, are assessed and are being incorporated into the menu. And the center considerations, as Dana was saying before, it is important to take into consideration uh, budgetary limitations or uh, storage space, kitchen equipment, those types of things. And we also recognize that you'll have your own evaluation criteria under your uh, center considerations. So we've left some space there for you to insert your own evaluation criteria. We welcome your comments and suggestions about our Child Care Centre menu planning tools and resources. Please contact us at menu.project at msvu.ca or www.msvu.ca slash menu project.